questions. It is seven o'clock. We will now call the September 14th regular town council meeting to order. Brian, could you say the Pledge of Allegiance? Absolutely. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we are starting the evening after our summer sabbatical with some proclamations. Uh, the first proclamation for John Karwaski and Brian, I believe you'll be reading that for us. John, would you like to join me up here, please? Sure. John? As a former chair of the Economic Development Commission, as you were, and so much more, it is my honor and pleasure to read this proclamation to you. Whereas John Karwaski served on the Farmington Town Council as, as a council member from 1983 through 1987, as well as two terms as the Democratic Town Chairman. And whereas John Karwaski also served the Town of Farmington as the first chairman of the Farmington Economic Development Commission in 1993. Since its inception in 1993, John has actively participated in the Economic Development Commission. During his tenure, the EDC hosted the annual business breakfast series, the Beautification Farmington Program, and the Small Business Resources Series. And whereas John Karwaski was an active member of the Farmington Chamber of Commerce, elected as president from 1997 to 1999. During that time, he represented Farmington on the Board of Governors with the Greater Hartford Chamber of Commerce. And whereas John Karwaski was a founding member of Westerly Elderly Housing Community in Unionville, John served as chairman of the Farmington Housing Partnership, an advocacy group committed to providing affordable housing for the elderly and handicapped in the community. And whereas John Karwaski was a 50 year member of the Farmington Exchange Club, serving as president in the early 1990s. John was also a, dis a division director of the Connecticut District Exchange Club for many years and was elected vice president. And whereas John Karwaski has always maintained a focus on, on the public good and donating countless hours of time, energy and personal commitment to better our community and enrich the lives of the residents of the town of Farmington. And whereas, in addition to his long-standing commitment to the town, John's true devotion lies with his loved ones, including his wife, Pat, his three children, Karen, Michael, and Christopher, and all his grandchildren. Now, therefore, the Farmington Town Council hereby commends John Karwaski for his excellent work on behalf of the community and we hereby thank him for his selfless dedication and immeasurable contributions and commitment to the town of Farmington and its residents. The Farmington Town Council hereby extends to John and his wife, Pat, best wishes on their future endeavors. Dated this 14th day of September, 2021 at Farmington, Connecticut, CJ Thomas, Town Council Chair. John, thank you for everything and I am pleased to consider you a good friend. Well, without a hat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and through the miracle of Zoom, fortunately, John's family is joining us online. So uh, we'd like to say thank you 
for all your years of service. And hopefully the next generation of those interested in service are watching and they'll be calling and contacting us to step in and help fill some very big shoes. In the meantime, I believe our state representative, Mike D'Amico has a proclamation as well. Thank you for your indulgence, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just wanted to offer my personal congratulations to John, who has given so much to the town of Farmington over decades. And it's appropriate that we honor him tonight. So I would like to bring greetings uh, from the State of Connecticut General Assembly. Uh, it's an official citation introduced by Representative D'Amico, Representative Exum, Senator Slap, and Senator Lopes. Uh, be it hereby known to all that the Connecticut General Assembly hereby offers its sincerest congratulations to John Karwaski in recognition of your many decades of dedicated service to the town of Farmington and its residents. As an active member of the town council, Democratic Town Committee, Economic Development Commission, Chamber of Commerce, Housing Partnership and Exchange Club, the residents, businesses and institutions of Farmington and Unionville are the beneficiaries of your selfless commitment and contributions. The entire membership extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued success. Given on this 14th day of September, 2021 at the State Capitol in Hartford, and it's signed by Martin Looney, President Pro Tem of the State Senate, Matt Ritter, Speaker of the House of Representatives, and Denise Merrill, Secretary of the State. Congratulations again, John. Humbled by all of this. I want to thank uh, Mike for his fine work state. I want to thank uh, the members of the Economic Development Commission, especially Bill Wadsworth and our director, Rose Ponte, for their efforts in uh, getting me to be recognized. It's very comforting to know that people support you and they're willing to uh, help, you, help you out when, uh, when the time is right. It's uh, been a, lo a lot of years I've been involved in town. It reaches a point where that you have, you have to kind of step aside and, and uh, get a younger generation to do it. And I'm glad to see there are some younger people not only he he sitting here, but throughout the town are, are willing to support efforts of, of the community. It's very important that people provide, provide their efforts and time to, to represent the community, help out young people and others and just uh, work work hard to make the community a better place to live. I thank everybody for this and appreciate it very much for this recognition. Thank you. Our second item on the agenda is a proclamation for Mountain View Farm. So Captain Farrell will be reading this one. Thank you. Pogs and family, you want to come up? <laughs> All right. How you doing? First, I want to thank uh, Ted Jones from uh, Jones Apries for letting me know about this special occasion for you guys. Whereas Mountain View Farm on Main Street was established in 1921, it has been a proud member of the Farmington business community for 100 years. And whereas Theodore Tater Hansen started Mountain View Farm on Main Street when Woodrow Wilson was president, a gallon of milk, I'm sorry, a gallon of gas was 26 cents, and a dozen eggs only cost 47 cents. Whereas Mountain View Farm has survived the Great Depression, World War II, the moon landing, the introduction of computers and social media, and continue to thrive and serve the Farmington community for 100 years. Whereas Tater's children, Grandchildren, great-grandchildren have continued to grow the business to include three farm stands in Farmington located on Plainville Avenue, Meadow Road, with all fresh food, local produce, and the best corn anywhere. Whereas the Poxon family not only continue to farm in our community, they also give to the community by serving on various volunteer boards and commissions. And now, therefore, let it be resolved 
we congratulate Mountain View Farm and the Tater family for their positive contributions to the town of Farmington and for celebrating 100 years of successful business. Dated the 14th day of September, 2021 at Farmington, Connecticut, CJ Thomas, Town Council Chair. Thank you very much. And uh, oh, so you guys have done a great job. So thank you. Our state representative will be joining us up front, so don't go too far. Sure. We got another one and uh, I'd just like to say the uh, the first position I had in town was being an alternate on TPNZ when Skip was chair. So I had the honor of serving under Skip at that point in time. And uh, time. it was <laughs> longer than we'd like to remember. And the corn is particularly good this year, so I think you have to make sure you make a stop over there. Mike. So, Mr. Chair, I would just like to clarify that it is Mountain View Farm that's 100 years old. It's not Skip that's 100 years old. I don't know. There you go. Okay, very good. So, my congratulations personally, and also congratulations from the State of Connecticut General Assembly. Official citation introduced by Representative D'Amico, Representative Exum, Senator Slap, Senator Lopes. Be it hereby known to all that the Connecticut General Assembly hereby offers its sincerest congratulations to the Pogson family and Mountain View Farm in recognition of your 100 years of providing fresh local produce to the residents of Farmington and Unionville through your three farm stand locations and for your dedicated service to the community by serving on numerous boards and commissions. The entire membership extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued success. Given this 14th day of September, 2021 at the State Capitol in Hartford, and it's signed by Martin Looney, President Pro Tem of the State Senate, Matt Ritter, Speaker of the House of Representatives, and Denise Merrill, Secretary of the State. Again, congratulations to Mountain View and to the Poxons. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, when my grandfather was uh, close to the end of his life, I went to see him and I said, I promise I will keep this farm going. At that time, I was um, 18, 16. <laughs> and little did I know I'd, I, I'd really be able to do it. But um, it has been wonderful and we hope to continue it for more generations and um, we're really loving it. And thank you so much. We actually have a great, great granddaughter who is now working occasionally. Wow. <laughs> I heard great there, but now there's great, great. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, item number three on the agenda is a presentation on wildlife feeding ordinance. So uh, Brenda and uh, Chief Paul Melanson are gonna give us a presentation on uh, the wildlife uh, feeding ordinance proposal. She's at the end. There we go. Hello, thank you for having us here. Um, oh, it's fine. We're here to present a wildlife ordinance, um, a wildlife feeding ordinance. You can go to the next slide. First, I'll talk a little bit about our bears. They um, desire to gain as many calories as possible. Um, with as little effort as possible. And our mother bears, our sows, are raising their, their cubs, often eating from our trash and our bird feeders. And these cubs are growing up, uh, losing their fear of humans. They're used to coming close to our homes to get our food. Next. So we've all seen it on the news and in social media. Um, we're all seeing bears. We're seeing them 
you know, taking down the feeders, uh, coming and ripping up the trash. Uh, the Farmington residents are educated and they know that this is happening. They see it all around. It's nothing new to any of us anymore. Next slide. And we can just go through these couple pictures here for you. What we see on social media and in the news. And here's what I'm seeing when I'm working in Farmington. Um, there's some people that will put down large amounts of whether it's bird seed or um, other attractants, um, and that can cause some problems. Next slide. So our goal is to protect humans and stop attracting wildlife close to our homes. I have many citizens that report concerns for their children and their pets um, when they're just out in their backyard or walking you know, to school. Um, many citizens complain about having to clean up the trash after a bear has dragged their neighbor's trash into their yard. Uh, uh, the bears will often take off with a bag, go a couple feet, um, and then rip it up and leave a big mess. And then we have lots of people that love and invite the, the wildlife onto their property. We're, we're here in beautiful Farmington and we all love to see the wildlife that we have around us. That's one of the benefits of, of being in such a beautiful town. Next slide. So the DP has put together a chart for me here showing the rise in conflicts that we have here in Farmington uh, from 2015 to 2020. And you can see our bird seed and trash uh, green, the green line is 2020. So that's taken a sharp increase. Um, and that again is just the reported cases. There's many more that go unreported, but the reported cases we're seeing a large increase of bird feeders, you know, having bears lay down and spend an hour, you know, munching down in somebody's backyard and the trash too. So there's other, you know, beehives, livestock, home entries. We've had several home entries. Um, so we're, we need to think about this and, and take, some, take some stands to make some changes. Next slide. So there are four towns in Hartford County that currently have an ordinance against feeding wildlife. Bark Hampstead, Simsbury, East Granby, and Granby is the newest. And there are two towns in the Litchfield County having an existing ordinance. Heartland um, has had one since 2019 and Colebrook in 2020. Next slide. So I received a call from someone who was trying to do some work in their backyard. Um, he said, there's a bear in my neighbor's yard. I've been making some noise, it won't go away. Um, I really need to get outside and do this work. Can you scare this bear away? So here we have a sow that has been hanging around a, a school and she's the bear with uh, ear tags, but she's got her boyfriend there with her behind her. So if you click on that first video, um, She's there's some bird seed scattered on the ground there, and they're leaving the bird no. seed. And she's go. She's coming closer and closer to me. She doesn't care that I'm standing there. And remember, it's very hard for me to take a video while I'm doing my job because I need to really keep focus on what's in front of me. But she, I stopped the video to be a little aggressive with her and get her to stop. And she paused. And now you can click on the next one. Um, since you don't care. She really doesn't care that I'm there Maybe. and she's yeah, going to continue doing no. what she's doing. She's And uh, she she's locking eyes with me. She's dropping her head and she's coming for me anyway. Uh, when I go to schools and I talk and I tell children how to react if they're walking to school and they see a bear, you know, you probably all have heard it. You, you look big, you make noise, you say, go away, bear. You know, you bang the pots and pans. These bears are getting so used to coming close to us that those things aren't really affecting them that much anymore. So next slide. Since you so if, if we do not change, there will continue to be growing risks of serious conflicts 
between bears and residents as well as their pets. So I'm hoping that we can uh, make some changes and, and resolve this problem before anything gets worse. So what, what we're going to uh, come next month and do is, is um, if there is interest, is come up with a ordinance. Uh, most of the ordinances that you have seen uh, that we described here, Bar Camp, said Sims, Missouri, they're all fairly similar. And it's the intentional feeding um, or the unintentional of leaving your garbage out. And really our goal is because we have people who intentionally feed the bears because they like the bears coming in and they may enjoy that. But the people who live next to them who have young kids, they do not like that. And obviously it creates an issue. And so that's, um, Brenda had brought this to me a couple months ago and we had worked on it. We talked um, to some other animal control um, officers in other jurisdictions. And they said, it's a good way that we can then tell people you can't do this because there's nothing right now that we can do when they're actually intentionally feeding the bears. And so we get numerous calls. Brenda goes out routinely to handle these. They're by the schools, uh, even today. Uh, we just got a call a couple hours ago when the buses were letting out. There's a bear in the area and the bus is about to stop and let the kids out. So our idea is that we do not want them to think people are friendly um, because then they will continue to approach people, continue to get closer and closer, enter their homes, their garages and those sorts of things. Um, so that's really what this bear ordinance is. And it's uh, obviously our idea would be at least we would educate people. Um, and that would be our first course of action. So if there's any questions, um, we'll, we'll be happy to take them. Questions from the council? I have one. Um, living near No Wallace, we see quite a few bears in the neighborhood. What, what, is there any kind of protocol for the schools if a bear comes on to the playgrounds or the properties or anything like that right now? Yes, you want it to because you go to them all the time. But we we've we've had um, many many issues with this, um, including a bear den next to one of our schools. So, um, if you want to talk about that a little bit, what the schools have been doing if they've been seeing a bear is having the students come in if they're on recess, um, or I've had uh, children walking on a walking path and they have to turn around and go back, you know, because there's a bear in front of them. Um, you can scare it away, but it might go around the corner. You don't know how far it's going. And they'll often, if you scare it away from one area where there's trash or bird seed, they go a couple homes up to the next, next trash can or whatever, you know, food source there is. So they're, they're pretty much, they call us. We go out and try and scare them away and get them away. But if the school sees them, they're, they're pulling the children in from recess or or whatnot. And just one follow-up. So you're in the schools right now as it is educating the kids if they should come upon a bear and the parents with uh, in their backpack, their folders and all that stuff. So we're actually getting the word out to the kids and the families. Right. I've, I've talked at the high school, the alternative high school, yeah. um, Westwood's upper elementary. Um, yeah, so I've, I've done lots of educating each time I go on calls, even for other things. I, I mean, I love bears. I like to talk about them. Everybody likes to talk about them. So I try and educate as much as I can. That's good. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions, Joe? So you're talking about educating. So do we like a two-strike rule, three-strike rule? Do fines go up as they are more habitual? Are you looking at something like that? So it would be each day of them feeding the bears would be an additional fine. Um, so the idea would be that Brenda would work with them to explain because right now she has explained, hey, you know, having your bird feeder here, this is why they keep coming back. And the next day the bird feeder is up again and the bear is back and the neighbors are complaining or they're putting food out and the neighbors are complaining. The bears are always coming through my yard because they're feeding. Brenda will explain to them, you, you know, um, it's not neighborly and it's not safe to feed the bears and um, there's nothing else that we can do. So they know. So here it would be, look, it is a violation to do this. We can point them towards the violation. And then if we get a call the next day, we would probably warn them again, work with them. And then after that, we would find them and tell them every additional day 
um, would then be an additional fine if they were feeding the bears. Um, and so that's kind of our, our, our idea is that most people will listen if they know that it's a rule, but right now it's not a rule. So uh, we like seeing the bears come, they say, and we like having them here. So that you have several kids and that it just, there, but there's no rule against it. So no, there's no specific DEP for? Not a statewide, no. Okay. So what, what type of fine are we looking at? So, so it would probably be the hundred dollars. Yeah, it would probably be the hundred dollars that we normally do. And again, there's an appeals process uh, that they would go through. They can appeal to the town, and it would work like any other town ordinance appeal that there would be a hearing. So uh, people would have their, you know, uh, you know, their ability to appeal any fine. But again, that would be a last resort. Our idea is by doing this, it's a part of the education piece, right? And then have now we have the enforcement piece of now we we've educated you on it now we have to enforce it because it is getting bad so and most of the ones that we go to right i mean people who have bird feeders up um and there's certain bird seed that you can have year round um because bears don't like certain bird seeds um but people who have bird feeders up that continually put them up and they're feeding the bears with their uh bird feeders it would be an education piece first, right? That's what we would try and do as an education piece. But we're not going to go around looking for people with bird feeders, right? It's going to be when we get a complaint, hey, the bears are always coming through and we see them always at the bird feeder. That's when then we would start the education with those residents. And then if they continued, that's when then we would be looking to use this ordinance. So that's kind of what, what we're envisioning. Uh, and I talked to some, like, you know, almost none of them are issuing infractions because just having the ordinance is the education piece saying, look, it's a violation. And people say, okay, and, and they'll take it down. Thank you. Other questions? Brian. Just uh, one quick question. Have there been any or many uh, human bear interactions which have been dangerous or, or even worse? There has not been a human attack by a bear but we've had people out in the yards with their dogs where the dog goes after the bear and then you know just by their size they're a dangerous you know animal um but they're pretty non-aggressive but when when a dog is loose and runs up and goes after a bear which is what often happens um and then the humans running after their dog to try and get their dog away you know, there's there's definitely a potential, you know, risk for sure to humans. You know, you come around a corner and there's a bear right there. Uh, usually the bear wants to go on its way. But if there's a cub right there, you know, but no, we haven't had really we've had home entries. And that's um, I think that's a human risk. <laughs> well, I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think and that's we've seen. I think we've all read the stories outside of Farmington. Uh, of their human interactions. Burlington, uh, Granby, uh, and then we've had dogs that have been attacked by yeah. bears. And bears don't know where the borders to the towns are, so. Yeah. <laughs> and it's interesting because they roam seven miles a day, right? So it's a, it's a large area that these bears can cover. Um, and anybody who's, uh, and everybody's seen a bear up close, but when I say up close, I mean like a tranquilized bear. Um, the enormity of the strength and size of these bears and the claws is really unbelievable and how nimble and quick they are to climb trees, to run, to jump fences. Um, it's, it's, uh, it is pretty, pretty amazing. Um, so they're, they're, although the black bear in Connecticut doesn't have many attacks, we've seen what they've done when they've entered houses or the car in Canton or the, right? I mean, it's just, uh, and if they get more and more comfortable with approaching people and knowing that that's where our food source is, we don't want, that's, that's what we're trying to stop. Absolutely. Uh, well, thank you. I think it's um, clear common sense hasn't been working. So we need to give you another tool to encourage people uh, to do what they should be doing. Uh, so I think we'll just ask the council for consensus that we'd like uh, the chief and Brandon to move forward on this. Yeah, yep. yes. All good. Yes. Yep. So next, um, next month, you'll set the um, public hearing and you'll see the ordinance and what the changes and then you'll set the public hearing for the following month. And then at the following month, then you'll have, um, you'll 
um, have the public hearing and then approve the ordinance if you uh, want to. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much Thank for the you. presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number four is the presentation on the fire station building committee. Kathy, you want to make sure on that? Yeah. So this is uh, Steve Hoffman, our director of fire and rescue services. And as you know, in the capital budget, and we've been talking about it for some time, about um, uh, renovating our fire stations. So I thought it would be helpful for the town council to kind of get a summary of where we've been and what our next steps are. And as you know, in our uh, budget, we um, are planning on setting up a building committee and we have some startup money for the fire station renovations. And Steve, maybe you can introduce the chiefs are here too and uh, introduce them and then uh, do the presentation. Sure. Uh, Mike Rebulis, he's the uh, volunteer chief at Farmington Fire Station and Chief, uh, chief uh, Rich Higley from Tonsu's Host. And Dave Saplinski was unable to make tonight, but he's the chief of East Farms. All right. Next slide. We did that. Next slide. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an overview of the last renovation we did in uh, 1999, about 22 years ago. Uh, included the construction of the Southwest Fire Station, uh, the demolition and construction of the Oakland Gardens Fire Station, and some upgrades or renovations to the three main fire stations. Uh, some of those uh, renovations included a second floor for Farmington, new elevator, um, generator, HVAC updates, East Farms, we had a new bay, replaced the roof, um, some asbestos removal, again, HVAC upgrades, uh, some underground electrical services. For Tungsys, we redid the parking lot, put a new generator, uh, put on an additional uh, add-on in the front of the bays and the dispatch office and upgraded the HVAC. So this is what we did about 22 years ago um, on the current main stations and then obviously the two substations. Next slide. So through this, in 2014, uh, the fire department decided to start doing uh, some legwork on what we needed to do on our fire station. So we did a study in 2014. Uh, we had a consultant come in, uh, addressed some of our requirements for building and fire code, um, site accessibility, fire and sa uh, safety and health concerns for the firefighters, um, operational space for administration, apparatus, equipment, things like that. Um, also, the building systems, which obviously we saw coming up to becoming obsolete and needing much more repair and most likely replacement, uh, some structural and design deficiencies that we had, as well as energy use um, efficiency upgrades um, on all the sites. And that was about seven years ago we completed that uh, study. Next slide. 2018, we did a second uh, study, which was three years ago. We want to look at the firehouses and where they were now uh, and were they in good locations based on our call volume, the community's future growth, response of our volunteer firefighters um, and the community need. Uh, we also uh, considered some other target hazards, um, where the call volumes were and our hot spots were and if those fire stations based on call response times and how long it took for the fire truck to get to the incident, were they all in good locations for that. So we did a study and that just gave us more information to see how we were with our current fire stations. Next slide. So we identified some uh, code compliance issues through the both studies. Uh, it's included some ADA issues, uh, some code obviously upgrades through the years because it has been upgraded for 22 years. So a lot of some things have changed since then. Um, inadequate ventilation and decontamination facilities in the firehouses, um, proper ventilation between the apparatus bay and the living quarters. Uh, firefighter health and safety, cancer prevention. That's a big topic for us in the fire service. So we're looking to upgrade our firehouses to provide that better health and safety location. Uh, social rooms uh, located um, underneath the apparatus bays in one of the fire stations. The fire apparatus are way heavier than they used to be. So those floors are taking on more weight and obviously there's people underneath them. And if you've been at that firehouse and heard the fire truck back into it, you'd know. <laughs> so looking at those things, um, building systems, plumbing, HVAC, electrical, all those upgrades which are coming up on their life lifespan. Uh, we're obviously seeing increased repairs on that. We've had to replace uh, circulator pumps, heater exchanges. All those things are starting to fail now and costing more money as far as maintenance goes. Lack of available space as the call volume increases and we have to, we're spending more time at the firehouses. More people are, are there, uh, need more space for gear, uh, need more space for training and meeting. Our training requirements just continue to grow. Uh, so being able to have adequate training space is important. Uh, office space, 
Two of the firehouses have one office for all their officers. That includes their chiefs and line officers, which is not really conducive for the administration work. Uh, so the idea would to have more office space for them. Uh, lack of space for gear rooms and SCBA. The idea is to take the gear out of the apparatus space and put them in a separate room because the exhaust from the apparatus tends to cling to that. And again, cancer prevention. Uh, bunk rooms and sleeping quarters, potentially, as we look at the future of the community, uh, potential live-in programs, uh, overnight calls, um, doing some type of scheduling with the volunteers for staffing the firehouses overnight, if that was done. So to have that for it for the future. Uh, exterior drainage issues, standing water around the generators, uh, downspouts aren't properly getting the water away from the building, so we're having leaks inside the building, uh, which obviously is increasing dampness and things like that. Uh, roofs all are having drainage issues. We're having them inside the building. So obviously our building maintenance is going around and trying to fix those repairs. One of the firehouses has a slate roof on it and it's a historical building. So to maintain that comes an elevated cost. Um, parking lot issues, uh, just the limited parking um, at East Farms. You have to park on the side or in the back the property on the right side where we've gotten the okay to park there currently, but should that be developed, we might lose that opportunity. Um, so Limited parking, also at Tungstis. Um, fire protection, all our fire protection systems, while, we are, while we're doing the maintenance and we're looking and doing the inspections, we're finding that those things need to be replaced as well. And that goes along with the fire alarm systems as well. They're obsolete. We can't even find parts for them. So we're kind of trying to make them work as best as we can. Um, efficiencies as far as updates, potential solar panels on the firehouses, getting rid of the oil and propane tanks of the firehouses and hooking up to natural gas if that's an opportunity, uh, water control faucets, um, more water efficient uh, things that are in the firehouse so that we're not using as much water, LED lighting throughout the firehouse, better windows that are obviously more energy efficient. So those are some of the ideas that were identified um, through those studies. Next slide. So in conclusion, we're uh, recommending that the uh, Town of Farm and Fire Department under the Farmington Town Code uh, and the town council consider statement needs for the fire stations for establishing a building committee uh, with a charge to further investigate the construction of new stations or renovations of the current fire stations based on what the findings of that committee are. Next slide. And these would be the next steps, approval of a statement of needs by the town council and then appointment of a building committee and approval of a committee charge uh, that there is uh, the approval of that statement of needs. And that is the presentation on the fire stations. So uh, the purpose obviously was trying to just give you a, a history of where we stand. And it's hard to believe that our fire stations really have not done any real major work in 22 years. Um, and our new fire stations are 22 years old, right? Yeah. So um, it's been on the docket. Steve and the chiefs have done a lot of work. We have a lot of the data to go with it. And I really think it's uh, time now that we um, look at approving the statement of needs, which will be very similar to what you just saw here, that, that these are the needs. And then it would be a, establishing a building committee. Um, what we have done in the past is have, a, I think, like a met one, or one member from each of the three fire stations um, to be part of the committee, some town council representation, and um, met a couple of members of the public, something along those lines. So. Um, if you know, we don't have to have a you know, if there's any questions with Steve in the group, but I think that would be something if uh, there's consensus you'll be seeing on your agenda in the near future. Great. Why don't we start? Any questions? You did obviously a spectacular presentation. <laughs> um, Thank you. okay, do we have a consensus to move this forward? Yes, yes. absolutely. Thank you. you all right, a good showing of the needs. Thank and you so much. You all go. Um, I would like to say while you're here. Uh, if you could relay our thanks, uh, this has been a particularly difficult few weeks for all of you. Um, we've had the storms, we've had the flooding, we had the unfortunate crash, um, and you also did a spectacular job at the 9-11 Remembrance. Uh, so thank you to all the first re uh, responders, uh, the fire, the EMT, the police, and all of you. We really appreciate everything you do, and uh, just in, thank you from the council. Thank you very much. Okay, next we will be moving on to item D, public hearing, having none. Uh, item E, new items, none. We will move on to item F, public comment. Uh, anyone who has any comments to say, please step up to the microphone. If you'll give your name and address. Oh, 
Oh, wait, sorry. One moment. We do have a new item. Thank you. New item. Getting ahead of myself. I make a motion to uh, add the item L24, Unionville Historic District and Properties Commission alternate. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you for catching me on that. Okay, so we have added item L24. Now we can go to public comment. Thank you. Right. Name, address, and general, we keep five minutes. My name is Mark Wilson, 61 Eli Road in Farmington. I'm here tonight. Well, first, I have a history of being long-winded and telling too many stories. So <laughs> I've written my comments So five tonight. minutes then. Okay, I'm going to so, get the uh, clock running now. You're welcome. I'm here tonight representing, though, not myself, but Wilson Development and WD2, the owners of the Bridge Hampton Crossing Development off River Road. There was some confusion, I think, in our application to be on the agenda tonight. And I, I guarantee if there was confusion, it was on my part. Uh, we'd requested to be on the council's agenda this evening in order to discuss the reconfiguration of Lot 76 within Bridge Hampton, which would involve a land swap with the town of Farmington. The information which was provided to council on this matter has been placed in the reading of communications, so no discussion could occur as I understand it and no decisions can be made by the council, again, as I understand it. <clears throat> this may be the process to eventually being a business item on the agenda. It's not clear to me, but I'm requ requesting formally that this item be placed on the next council meeting agenda as a new business item. As always, if any council members or staff have any questions regarding this matter, I'm available anytime. I just wanna make clarification of that. Thank you. That was quick. Yeah. All right, moving on. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, do we have any questions from the Zoom community? Who? What's that name again? <laughs> Jay, just kidding, Jay. Uh, Jay Tulin, can you hear us? Very funny, CJ. <laughs> it's Jay Tool in 39 Timberline Drive. Uh, that 860-4705-156 is me. I'm going to make this brief because I know you guys have a lot of stuff. First of all, can you all hear me? We can. Okay, good. Um, I just want to take a minute or two to talk about the second annual Anti-Defamation League Walk Against Hate which is something that I've been speaking on at a number of meetings. I think you guys might have all gotten some communication from me. We won't, I won't ponder that too much, but um, I think it's very important that I, you know, it's my intention to continue to speak about this up until the date of the event as much as possible because I think it's that important. Um, the event is, like I said, the second annual Anti-Defamation League Connecticut uh, Walk Against Hate. It's at the Watkinson School on Sunday, October 10th. Um, it is a fundraising event. I, I, I am I also am hoping to coordinate teams or team or teams to re to represent Farmington at this walk because I again think it's that important. Um, I just want to read an excerpt because I I'm not sure what people know about the anti defamation league, but I kind of excerpted something from their web page that I just want to read and then I'm done with my comments. The Anti-Defamation League works to protect all marginalized groups from the devastating impacts of extremism, reduce bias in individuals through education, and create an environment of laws and norms where all groups are treated fairly and hate has no home. Again, October 10th at the Watkinson School, um, there is a registration fee, I believe, I think it's $25 for adults, $15 for youth, and free for uh, you know children under four. I do think it's that important to participate and it is my hope that uh, Farmington can have some presence at this event. I appreciate the opportunity to speak as always. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jim. And do we have any other Zoom questions? Hearing none. Now we will move on to item G, reading of the minutes. Make a motion to accept the minutes of the July 13th, 2021 regular town council meeting. Second. We have a motion to second. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Item H, 
reading of communications and written appeals. We have four letters that were sent in. You have uh, the four letters that are, are attached in your uh, packet. We have, uh, I think it's a, a person uh, recommending a mask mandate, a person not saying do not do a mask mandate, and um, also we have uh, Mark Wilson's correspondence with his backup. Okay, and I think we had two no's and one yes mask, if I recall, of the four letters. Okay. Um, item I, report of committees, land acquisition committee. Nothing new to report. Okay. Uh, Green Efforts Committee. Uh, no report. Our next meeting after uh, taking a break over the summer will be uh, on the 21st. Thank you. Farmington High School Building Committee. Yes, we met uh, this past Wednesday. Um, and just a couple of items to note coming out of that meeting. Um, there was an initial preliminary meeting. Well, I guess, first of all, the uh, schematic uh, design is ongoing and continues to move forward with uh, TSKP partners. And the, there was a preliminary meeting with um, our um, owners rep and, and TSKP and other individuals with uh, the Office of the School Construction Grants Review at the state. And the general feedback was just to give them a, a sense of how the project was going and where we are. And that was well received. And so we're moving forward with that. The most substantive development from last Wednesday's meeting was that we did review the 10 responses to the RFP for a construction manager. Uh, the committee selected four firms that will be coming back next Wednesday um, for interviews. So we will meet next Wednesday to interview our four uh, candidates. Great. Thank you. Racial Equality Task Force. Yes. Well, we're going to start scheduling our fall meetings. And over the summer, our subcommittees have been working on a variety of topics, including youth and police initiatives, an RFP for a consultant web, web page, Diverse Farmington, and initial meetings have also been held to discuss economic goals and our next community conversation as well, health disparities. Okay, Adam J, report of town council chair and liaisons. We start with the chair's report. Uh, and I'd like to announce that our generations of Fiscal restraint and strategic planning continue to pay off. Uh, Moody's has reaffirmed our AAA bond rating. Uh, and that is certainly good news in light of the large bonding we plan on doing in the near future for the high school project. Uh, I do want to just remind everyone, uh, when we passed the building referendum, uh, it was under the understanding that we would lessen the tax impact going forward by continuing to be fiscally responsible in the future. So this is very important that we continue what we have been doing for generations. So this doesn't have a large impact on the community. Uh, on item N3 later on, we'll be discussing in detail revenue and expenditure victories for the fiscal year of 2021. Uh, our revenues fortunately were doing well uh, and our spending uh, was down less than anticipated. So there's good news. We'll hear more about that later. Uh, this summer, it's brought about uh, a great deal of activity. Unfortunately, not all good. As I mentioned a bit earlier, when our first responders were here, uh, there were some weather events going on, winds, uh, flooding, heavy rains. Uh, so please try and continue to help all those affected, particularly our farmers, not just the one. We've got eight farms in town that you can uh, help support. They had uh, some uh, tough breaks with the, uh, with the flooding. Uh, we also mourn the four souls that were lost in the tragic airplane crash, and we offer, again, our seer, sincerest uh, thoughts and support for the Trump community. Uh, the Scouts this past Saturday put together a, a fantastic 9-11 uh, Remembrance Day, uh, replete with speakers, uh, the big flag on the fire truck, and a very nice showing. Uh, it was pointed out that all of the Scouts, Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, and Girl Scouts that were in attendance were not even born uh, 20 years ago when 9-11 occurred. So it's just that much more important uh, to explain to them uh, what went on and particularly uh, the first responders uh, telling some of their stories. Uh, our own former chair, Jeff Hogan, uh, shared some of his stories. We sent uh, nine Farmington first responders, took uh, Engine 4 down there and went to the Twin Towers uh, to help with the work. They left at, uh, and Peter Master Batista up here was one of them. Uh, they left at three o'clock in the afternoon of 9-11 to go down there and uh, help that effort. So thank you to all of them. 
Uh, on the positive side, we've had some great use of our trails, the parks and the riverfront. Uh, people did a fairly good job of carrying out what they brought in, so thank you for that. Uh, and uh, our community's also done a great job uh, post uh, the, the worst of COVID in the past when we started to open up businesses, uh, we've been supporting them. So our business community has seen the improvements. So thank you for all of them. Also, uh, vaccination rates uh, have continued to rise in Farmington. We've had over 90% uh, eligible getting their first shot at least. Uh, so thank you all for that. And uh, most recently, our COVID cases have been uh, continuing to decline. So that's also a positive. Uh, one other note I'd like to make, if you would go to your, uh, the Farmington webpage and you'll go to the government section, uh, under that section is the board and commissions booklet. Uh, you can scroll through, there are numerous opportunities for people who are willing to volunteer their time. Uh, we have many uh, positions available. You could contact the town manager's office and let them know of your interest. Uh, we gave a presentation earlier today for someone who has donated 50 years of his time to help out. Uh, you don't have to commit to 50 years. Any amount of time is good, but please, we welcome everyone to join in. Uh, with that, I will move to the Board of Education meeting. Uh, no, no formal report as the Board of Education has not uh, recommenced meeting yet. That me their next meeting will be on Monday, the September 20th. So I'll have a more substantive report. Other than that, just speaking with Superintendent Greeter, the school season uh, uh, year is off to a good start um, with in-person learning and everything is going well. Thank you. Economic Development Commission. Uh, the EDC met on September 1st. Uh, Evan Dobos from Civic Lift and our Economic Development Director, Rose Ponte, gave a demo of the new Explore Farmington 2.0 website. Uh, we'll be hearing more about this when Rose um, shows the website to the Town Council. I think that's at our next meeting. Um, the EDC hosted, also hosted their fall business breakfast event on uh, September 9th. The keynote speaker was Mr. Mike Goman, Principal Advisor in Development Service at Goman & York. Uh, Mr. Goman discussed redevelopment trends and opportunities of commercial real estate post-COVID, and the event was very well attended. And our next meeting is scheduled for October 13th at 5.30 p.m. Thank you. Farmington Historic District Commission. Uh, nothing to report. Thank you. Housing Authority. Uh, nothing to report. Okay, Human Relations Commission. Yes, for our last meeting, we had a presentation by Susan Schnitzer, President and CEO of the Institute of Refugees and Immigrants. We also recognize two um, students who graduated and are attending their first year of college, Bella Safrandini and Mercy Atacola for her for the, as recipients of the Farmington Community Services Award for all their outstanding work they've done for our community. Uh, we're finalizing our plans with the HRC Disability Voter Registration. We had an event today at two o'clock at New Horizons, and I believe it was a pretty good attendance. Paula, you were there today? I uh, know, because they limited it to only two people who were able to come because of the COVID. Season. Okay. So it was Ann and um, I think Nancy who went. Okay. We welcomed our new member, June Liu, and our next meeting is October 25th, where Catherine Kramer, our town planner, will be uh, sitting down with us and talking about affordable housing plans. Great. Thank you. Uh, library board. Uh, nothing to report, but tonight, tomorrow night is our uh, meeting from uh, after summer break. Great, thank you. Uh, town plan and zoning liaison. TPZ held a meeting last night. The major topic was a public hearing for 402 Farmington Avenue, an application for a special permit for blasting to construct a multifamily development on lots 40 and 40B1 Farmington Avenue, and uh, it was approved. Great. Unionville Historic District Commission. Uh, the Unionville Historic District Commission met on September 2nd. The commission is continuing their discussion regarding the review and update of guidelines in the historic district, and the next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, October 7th. Thank you. Unionville Village Improvement Association. Uh, nothing to report. Thank you. Uh, Water Pollution Control Authority. Only thing I can say is everything is still flowing in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best news we've had all night. Uh, and any other liaisons or commissions anyone wants to report on? Okay, seeing none. We report to item K, the report of the town manager. 
CJ, you hit a couple of my items, so I'll, that's okay. <laughs> um, just uh, uh, September 28th, that's uh, our next uh, town council meeting. They're typically a workshop meeting. And I thought that we could um, have a presentation from Rose Ponte on Explore Farmington 2.0 and also an overall economic development update. So that will be at the next meeting on September 28th. Again, my office um, worked with the Scouts um, and the, the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts on the uh, 20th anniversary of 911. And um, I thought, as CJ said, I thought it was a very moving and uh, great event. And we got some really nice pictures. So hopefully we'll be able to um, post them. And the video, um, Anna Wright, is posted on um, our website too, right? It's on YouTube and we will be posting we'll, we'll be posting it. So if anyone wants to pick it up and uh, it was a, a really great event. And then uh, uh, CJ mentioned that we're very pleased that on uh, July 13th, we did um, get our triple A uh, Moody's rating again. So we're happy about that. Great. Any questions? Do we have a motion to approve the town manager's report? I'll make a motion to approve the town manager's report. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Item L, appointments. Agenda item L2, I make a motion that Rich Berlandi be appointed to the Conservation and Inland Wetlands Commission for a four-year term beginning October 1st, 2021 and ending September 30th, 2025. Second. I have a motion to second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, uh, L2, L3, go ahead. Uh, agenda item L4. I make a motion that Neil. Uh, no, it's L3. That should be L3. L3. Yeah. Okay. Uh, agenda item L3 that Neil Kelsey be appointed to the Conservation and Inland Wetlands Commission for a four year term beginning October 1st, 2021, and ending September 30th, 2025. Second. Motion to second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next. Agenda item L9, that Evan Honeyman be appointed to the Farmington Historic District Commission for a five-year term beginning October 1st, 2021 and ending September 30th, 2026. Second. We have a motion a second. Any comments? All in favor? Just a question on clarification. Sure. Why is it a five-year term? Uh, they're, they're generally five-year terms. What happened was, uh, Brian, some of the terms were muddled over the years and somehow they got off of term. So it'll be a five-year term. I think the last time, was he filling out at the end of a term, Paul, the last time, do you recall? He was, was appointed to fill a term that ended September 30th of this year. Okay. Or is ending. And this is a new brand new five-year term. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passing in. Next. Agenda item L11 that Maureen Frank be appointed to the Housing Authority for a five year term beginning October 1st, 2021, and ending September 30th, 2026. Second. Motion is second. All, uh, any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passing in. Agenda item L12 that Sally Hudson Bueller. Be appointed to the Housing Authority for a five year term beginning October 1st, 2021, and ending September 30th, 2026. Second. Motion to second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Agenda item L20 that Philip Dunn be appointed to the Water Pollution Control Authority for a five-year term beginning October 1st, 2021 and ending September 30th, 2026. Second. I have a motion to second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Agenda item L21, that Ann Wolfling be appointed to the Unionville Historic District and Properties Commission for the balance of a five-year term beginning immediately and ending September 30th, 2022. Second. I have a motion to second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Uh, L22, I move that Barbara Marsh be appointed to the Unionville Historic District and Properties Commission as an alternate member for a three-year term beginning October 1st, 2021 and ending September 30th, 2024. 
Second. We have a motion to second. Any comments? Uh, I also just wanted to say a few words about that. Absolutely, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, Barbara is currently serving as alternate on the committee. She's exactly. greatly enjoyed her time on the commission and has participated in many discussions and activities that have helped keep Unionville a historic center and viable modern community. Okay. Thank you very much, Ed. I apologize. Uh, any other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Uh, we got to back up to agenda item L7 that Bob Reed be, a, be appointed to the Economic Development Commission for a two year term beginning October 1st, 2021, and ending September 30th, 2023. Second. I have a motion to second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Agenda item L8 that Bill Wadsworth be appointed to the Economic Development Commission for a two year term beginning October 1st, 2021, and ending September 30th, 2023. Second. I have a motion to second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Yep. And L24, I move that Steve Meyer be appointed to the Unionville Historic District and Properties Commission as an alternate member starting immediately for the remainder of the term. Great. Second. I have a motion to say. So Steve grew up in Unionville and he spent his career in the historic preservation field and is a practice preservationalist and restorationalist. And what he will bring valuable perspectives and skills to the commission. Great, thank you. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed you now. Um, is that it for you guys? Uh, yep. yep. Uh, I have two. Um, the Chamber of Commerce has reached out um, for item L5. They are they give a representation representative for the economic development, and they've asked that Dan Kleinman be reappointed. A second. A motion and a second. <coughs> Any questions? All in favor? Oh. What's that? Uh, oh yes, he should actually. Yeah. He's asking someone else to make the motion. Oh yes. Go make the motion. Does he have a paper for me? Dan. Dan Kleiner. Dan Kleiner. Here, I'll, I'll take it, Joe. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I make an uh, agenda item L5 that Dan Kleiner be appointed to the Economic Development Commission for a two year term beginning October 1st, 2021, and ending September 30th, 2023. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. I have one more. Um, this would be L19, and this is the union representation um, for the retirement board. And Paula, let me spell the name and then someone can make the motion. It's uh, Chris, C-H-R-I-S, and the last name is J-E-S-U-D-O-W-I-C-H. And that's the union rep. <laughs> and Peter? That's you, you're up. I make a motion to L19, right? Yep, L19. Uh, that Chris yeah. just. Just a Dowich. Just a Thank you. Beautiful. We apologize <laughs> to the retirement board for the balance of a two year term beginning immediately and ending January 2022. 20, January 2022. Second. I have a motion to second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passed unanimously. That's it. That wow. is it for all of L. Okay, moving on to item N, new business. Make a motion, agenda item at, uh, N1, to name the turf field at Tunxis Mead, the Setlow Family Field, for the request of the Farmington Soccer Club. Second. I have a motion to second, Kathy. Uh, the Farmington Soccer Club reached out to our office and they wish to name the turf field at Tunxis Mead for Dr. Peter Setlow. Um, Dr. Setlow has coached teams in Farmington longer than any other coach starting in 1977 and continuing for an incredible 44 years. He also served as vice president of the club since 1980, where his main task was to manage the concession stand, which is the soccer club's main source of income. Furthermore, uh, Dr. Setlow donated $100,000 to ensure the completion of the turf field. The request meets the criteria of the manager policies and procedures, MPP, <coughs> naming of town owned properties and features. The soccer club will be donating the plaque with the family name near the players' benches facing the stands. 
The new turf field has proven to be a great addition to Tungsis Mead as it's the most field at the park. The recreation department rented the field four or five, three or four times a week and when available to local premier teams. In the fall, Farmington High School teams use the field for practice as well as for JV games and for varsity games in inclement weather. So I think that this would be a, a great name for our turf field. Great. Any questions? I did have a motion and a second, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Next. Agenda item N2, to establish a town council ad hoc committee to work with the town staff to make recommendations to the town council on the next steps involving the American Rescue Plan Act, um, the coronavirus state and the local fiscal recovery funds, federal, sti federal stimulus monies received by the town of Farmington. Second. We have a motion and a second, Kathy. What's that? Uh, are you going to fill in the members' names? Yes. Yeah. We will. Um, do you want to put that? That will be uh, Brian and Joe. Yeah. Um, town, town, town Council Member Joseph Capitaferro and Town Council Member Brian Conley. Second. I re second to second. You can re second yeah. it now. Second, second. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you can see in our note that uh, Farmington is anticipated to re receive uh, $7,500,000 plus or minus in funding through the coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds program to address the economic fallout related to the pandemic. We've already received $3,700,000 in June. We're expected to receive another $3,700,000 in June of 2022. We must uh, obligate the funds by December 31st, 2024, and funds must be fully expended by uh, uh, December 31st, 2026. There's guidance that um, how you spend these funds come from the U.S. Department of Treasury, and they've listed, I've listed in the, the note some of the guidelines, some of the ineligible uses, and potential uses that so far um, haven't really been clear if we can use the money or not. I'm recommending that we set up this ad hoc committee similar to the ad hoc committee that was established for the next steps concerning the Parsons property. Um, it was my thought that the town council members and town staff will form a working group to review the guidelines, determine next steps, and eventually make recommendations on eligible projects to the town council. Sounds good. Any questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Agenda item N3, that the following appropriation transfers be made from and to the accounts listed below in the fiscal year 2020-2021 general uh, fund budget. You want me to read through all these? Mm -hmm. No. no. Okay. As attached. Okay. As attached. Second. I have a motion and a second. Kathy? So the first, the motion is that you're transferring money from departments, that's the first part, 434000 into the other departments um, below. Um, Joe did a very nice job on um, the details in the back. I just wanted to kind of summarize um, some items and then open it up for questions. I would say um, in general, we had a, a really a great revenue year. So we had a great revenue year and much of that was driven by the housing market, um, uh, the housing market and building permits. Paula's office was incredibly busy and with the conveyance tax and uh, really brought in a ton of revenue for us. So we had a great revenue uh, year. Um, we had a good expenditure year. Um, the town returned, the town returned, uh, $241,685 and the school system returned $378,572. So these were funds for various reasons that we did not use. So uh, we returned those funds. And in Joe's narrative, you can see some of the reasons why we were able to return some uh, funds. Overall, our grants were on target. Our federal grants were on target. So that's good. As you know, last few years, we weren't sure what kind of grants we were getting. So we were, um, we were uh, in some ways underfunding our grants because we weren't sure we were going to get them. And this year, we thought we were pretty confident what grants we were going to get. And with Joe's uh, knowledge, we uh, pretty much hit the target on our grants. So that was uh, good. And thank you to the state of Connecticut for that. Um, in summary, for fiscal year 2021, general fund revenues exceeded budget amounts by 1,606,778, and 
and expenditures were less than budgeted amounts by 600,599, resulting in a positive result of operations totaling $2,207,377. When this amount is added to the unassigned fund balance and increases the general fund unassigned fund balance to 18,354,700 or 15.81%, of fiscal year 21-22 operating revenue. So I would say in general, financially, we had a very, very strong year. Um, uh, I think that we're in a good spot for our high school project coming up and uh, also with our federal stimulus money. And I think we've positioned ourselves in a very good position uh, going forward. Great, thank you. Questions? Uh, uh, just uh, Kathy, a very quick recollection. Where, percentages, where do we want to run our fund balance? Like, do we, you know, we've given ranges in the past, right? So just where do we like that target yeah. number to be? Right. J Joe, what's the, the range? Thank you. Just a refresher. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions? None. Uh, very good year. That was uh, some positive news there. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passed unanimously. Agenda item N4, I make a motion to award a contract for the purchase of one 2023 international model HV5007 heavy duty cabin chassis to Nutmeg International Trucks Incorporated, apart for Connecticut at a purchase price of $94,510.42. Second. I have a motion to second, Kathy. Uh, this motion is to contract with a vendor to purchase a heavy duty cab and chassis that will be outfitted to be used as a heavy dump truck by the Highway and Grounds Department for their daily operations, including snow plowing. It will replace a 1998 heavy duty dump truck. Funds in the amount of $188,000 were included in 2122 capital budget. The remaining funds will be used to purchase the dump truck the dump body and the other accessories once the cab and chassis are delivered. This was done on co cooperative bid, so it's the low bid. Right. Any questions, comments? Just one question, Kat. Yeah. Do we know the truck that it's replacing? Do we know what's going to happen with that truck? Is it does it stay in circulation, or will we be selling that? Great, thank you very much. Just curious. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Okay, we have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Agenda item N5, I make a motion to award a contract for the purchase of one model number M1221 tool cap 5600 utility work machine with accessories to Bobcat of Connecticut Incorporated of East Hartford, Connecticut at a purchase price of $78,129. Second. We have a motion and a second, Kathy. This motion is to contract with a, a vendor to purchase a tool cap 5600 utility work machine. The machine will be used by the grounds division for snow removal, spraying, field maintenance, and rails to trails maintenance. It will be replacing an existing tool cap, which is 12 years old and has more than 2,000 operating hours. Funds are in the 21-22 capital budget. And this was, again, done by cooperative bid, so it is the low bid. And... Um, the reason why the council is looking at it is because the value exceeds over fifty thousand dollars. Any questions? A motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Agenda item N six. I make a motion to award a contract for the purchase of treated road salt for the 2021-2022 winter season to Cargill Inc. of Boston, Mass. at a purchase price of $67.54 per ton. I'll second, but you did skip six. 
You got the seven. What's that? I think you went above one. Above. Maybe then six, six for the six for the radios. For the radio. Uh oh, wait a minute. Do we have right, typo? Let's go back. No. Go back. No. Okay, do N seven. We have a motion, Peter. Do I just did N six? No. Oh, there's a there's a there's a glitch. There's a glitch. Okay, let's let's do on the. On, this, on the, the, on the, on the screen, on the electronic oh. version. Uh-huh. Good old Peter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Here I am. Looking uh, on the back. No. no. So we'll <laughs> be old school. Old school, old school number letter six is correct. So right. you're correct. Do you want me to read that no. again? No. <laughs> I'll okay. We got a motion and a second for the road salt. Any comments? Okay. The purpose of this motion is to contract with the vendor to supply treated road salt, which will be used by the Highway and Grounds Division on snow and ice covered roads and sidewalks during the upcoming winter season. This is the lowest price at 67.54 per ton. It's estimated that we'll use 2,000 tons during the upcoming winter season, bringing the value of this war award to approximately $135,000. We have funds um, in the budget for this, and this was done through the Capital Region Purchase Cooperative bid. Nice. Any questions or comments? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Is N7 N7? N7 is N7, the, the radio. The radio. Yep. I make a motion to award a contract for the purchase of 10 portable radios and accessories to Motorola, Motorola Solutions Incorporated of Woodcliffe Lake, New Jersey at a total contract price of $50,000. Second. Uh, the, motion second, Kathy. Sorry. The purpose of this motion is to contract with Motorola to supply 10 portable radios and accessories to be used by the Farmington Police Department. The radios will be interoperable and will be will allow the user to communicate with police officers from other towns who use different frequencies. The estimated value of this contract is fifty thousand dollars. We have money in the budget, and this would be under the state of uh, a cooperative bid. Any questions or comments? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Agenda item N8. I make a motion to approve the following property tax refunds as yes, listed sir. below. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, standard. Uh, any questions, comments? It's just a note. This is two months worth of refunds, and it's the end of the uh, season. So, but it is two months. And I must recuse myself as I am one of those listed here. So, all in favor? Can we object to that one? Aye. <laughs> I don't think the other people would appreciate that. Uh, okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, we will be moving into executive session. Before we do so, I would like to quote Dr. Jonas Salk, who said, I feel the greatest reward for doing is the opportunity to do more. With that, item O. Make a motion, Executive O-1, uh, to discuss matters concerning the sale or acquisition of real property. Uh, members included in the meeting will be the town council members and town manager. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 818, we're going into executive session. 